Hello guys and welcome to Till Vacuum Do Us Part and welcome to today's video. We're going to be doing a very affordable accent wall. So this is going to be an accent wall on a budget if you're wanting to add one in your home. We're going to be doing it in my dining room or breakfast little nook area but you could put this anywhere in your house and I feel like it's just going to make it look super customized. It was under a hundred dollars. So I'm going to show you these before clips and then we're going to get started and I'm going to be showing you the step by step process. If you're new here or haven't done it yet, I'd love for you to click that red subscribe button down below. It just notifies you every time I post a video, which is twice a week, so you don't miss any future uploads. So before we ever get started or buy anything, you can see in that last scene, we're just visualizing what we're gonna do. We're trying to kind of tape it out to know how many boards we're gonna need. But now I'm gonna start clearing out the space so we can get to work. Basically, I took down all those frames and each frame had two nails um, to hold it up. So we're just gonna remove all of those and then I'll fill those in and touch those up later towards the end of this video. Okay, so there are two types of people when you're doing home projects like this. You can eyeball it, like what I would totally do if Chase wasn't here, I would just be eyeballing this bad boy. I do that when I hang frames. If it's in the wrong spot, I take it down, I shift it to the left or right. There may be five holes behind that frame, but nobody can see it. But Chase is very detailed, and I feel like this is really smart with an accent wall, is to take painter's tape and go ahead and kind of map it out so you have an idea. So you can map out every frame that you're gonna be putting up on the wall, or you can just kind of put markers up so you get a feel of how many boxes you want on the wall or how many um, lines you're going to be going across. So it kind of depends on what accent wall or what look you're going for. But if you're not 110% committed, I suggest using tape, even if you're going to just be hanging pictures. This gives your eye a visual without doing anything like that's super permanent or that's going to take a long time. Hold on to me tight as we dive into the so I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but we're actually gonna be doing the picture frame molding. So we didn't know how big our squares were gonna be, our rectangles, did we want tons, did we just want a few? So that's where the tape comes in for us. We're just trying to nail down our design. We had already decided we only wanted three of them, like three across, and then they'll have um, squares underneath them. But I have a thing for threes. I like them, I like decorating in threes. It's just very pleasing to the eye. So I knew I wanted three. We just had to base that off of how big they needed to be, how long. So tape did this before we started cutting wood. So we didn't waste a ton of money on lumber right now because that stuff can be expensive. We just had to use tape. So you can see right here what it's gonna look like. So now that we have this taped off, you could go ahead and do two more if you need to see it, but for us, it was enough. We knew how high we were gonna go. We knew the style and the shape. Basically, we just have to recreate this two more times. So we're gonna head out to the garage so we can start doing our cutting. This is the molding we chose to use. There's lots of different options when you go into the stores. This was just $6.99 for like the whole piece, which was super nice. So we're just gonna get these cut down. We did end up over buying. I wanna say we bought 14 and we ended up only using 10 of them. So we can take four back, but basically that's around 70 bucks plus tags. And that's all we had to buy for this project. We had paintbrushes, we had tape, we had caulking, and then we already had leftover paint from the builders. So for 70 bucks, we were able to complete this entire wall. Even if you had to buy a can of paint and paintbrushes, you could still easily do this for under $100. Now all the cuts are made and just remember when you're doing this for your space, you can customize this any way you want. You could have bigger squares, smaller squares, rectangles. Um, if you're on a tighter budget, you could definitely make them smaller so you don't have to get as many trim boards. So totally just make this work for your home. Wish on every shooting star that you still come back 
Also, just remember anytime you're doing any type of home project, it's always going to get worse before it gets better. Your house is going to be a disaster. It's just the way it is. You've got tools out, you're moving furniture around, but it's always worth it when you're finished. I also feel like I haven't said this in a while. If you've been around for a while, you've heard me stress this, but for all my new people out there, um, I always get comments of your husband's so nice that he helps you out. I just want to do a shout out for all the husbands out there. Just a reminder, this is our jobs. We get paid to do this. So if your husband's been working all day long and he doesn't want to come home and do a whole accent wall before he goes to bed, that's okay. Show him some love. I just like to put that reminder out there sometimes because I think we forget that um, Chase doesn't work outside of the house. This is just what we get to do together. And we're very thankful for that. And you guys make that possible. But go ahead and love your husbands. Maybe they'll help you out on weekends. Maybe it'll take them a couple days but definitely show them some love. So it's probably a good idea to have some type of level with you if you're going to be doing this project. You may not need it exact, like Chase is measuring out even the distance. I honestly think you could eyeball it a little bit and it'll be okay. I think once it's painted, it's going to trick the eye some, but you definitely want it level your pieces, especially that first piece. Otherwise, the angles that you cut at a 45 degree angle aren't going to mesh up. And if they do, your frame's gonna be a little bit cockeyed. So just make sure when you're putting on that first board, it's really leveled. You can even get like a free app on your phone and set it on there, but that's probably your most important board every time you're starting a new square. Burning up when you come close, I hope you never disappear. I'll be in it to stars go quit and even then I'm with you when they Just so you know, this video is also like a mini dining room makeover. I do have some new decor pieces I'm gonna be switching out. So once this wall's done, I'm gonna tweak a few pieces. I always like to do that in spaces when I'm doing a new accent wall. So it's a little accent wall tutorial plus a mini makeover if you like seeing me decorate as well. You can really start to see it coming together right here. You're getting an idea of our design and what we thought up in our head. Um, Chase is being really good measuring things out, but once again, if you're nervous about starting a wall, I don't think things have to be perfectly measured out, especially when you look at them from angles. Like this space has multiple center points just because of the way it's tucked back here in this corner. But I think you could just almost put these frames together. I'm curious if you could like attach these frames together on the ground and then just hold them up on the wall and attach them once they're installed. Obviously this is the way Chase chose to do it but if I did it I would not be measuring every detail. Now when it's done it is perfect but I think if it was a little to the left or a little to the right if you didn't measure out every detail it would still look fine. Pro tip for you is to always do caulking before you paint it. This is what's going to make it look so much more professional. You're not going to have any like dark lines where you see cracks or creases. Um, if any of the wood split a little bit or if your frame didn't connect perfectly, this is what's going to hide it and make it look flawless. And then I'm also going to be filling all of the holes, um, like the nail holes from when the pictures were there. So then when I have the paint out, we can just paint everything that we need to. Um, so I'm working with that type of stuff and then Chase is working on the caulking. I know this step may seem a little bit tedious, but I promise you it doesn't take that long at all. And it's one of the most rewarding things. So at the end, you would be really mad once you started painting. And if you saw like 
the trim board not all the way flush with the wall or where it meets up in the corners. This really just covers up any mistakes or flaws that you have. So once you're finished, you're always thankful you did this step. And like I said earlier, it does not take that long to do. However, it is a very messy step. You can see right here on the ground, a lot of white stuff's falling. That's also because our product's getting a little old as well. But I wanted to show you the wood up close. You can see where it's filling in all those gaps and all of those corners. Um, then you just let it dry. We're also taking a wet cloth just to wipe off any of the excess. And then I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum up this mess before we go on to the next step. Okay, here is where we are at so far. I feel like it's not even painted yet and it already looks so much better. I felt like the frames there were just getting a little too busy for my taste. I feel like this just looks very custom. It makes the space feel bigger. But now all we have left to do is paint it. Now since this is an accent wall, you could paint it a pop of color. So whatever that is for you. Typically for us, that's like a black color. Um, I may have wanted to paint it white, but this wall kind of keeps going into our kitchen. So we are just painting the wood trim to match the wall color that was already there. If you like this wall color, it's repose gray. We're super happy with it. It's um, just like a really gray color. It doesn't have any blue tones or anything like that. So this makes the painting part super easy because we don't have that much to paint. Now, if you were having to repaint the whole thing, it would take a little longer. But for us, this was like the easiest, fastest part. about what could be coming every day we danced and life was smiling we were young and here is another pro tip. If you already have your paint out and it's the same as the other walls in your house or other furniture in your house, this is a good time to do touch-ups because you already have the paint out, you already have the paint brush out. So if you have that paint anywhere else in your home, whether it's a wall or a piece of furniture, go touch it up so you don't have to get it out later and it's already done before you clean it. I feel like anytime I have a paint brush out, I just walk my house to make sure there's no touch-ups anywhere. Cause you're here to stay every night and day I'm delighted cause I got you I have always been afraid of changes we did end up using two coats of paint. We did not need three, but one was not enough. I definitely don't like just globbing on paint. I like to do a real thin layer. That way it'll dry real quickly and within a few minutes I can go ahead and do the second coat. So that's how I paint. I think if Chase were to do it, he could do one thick layer, but I feel like it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I just did two thin coats and it did not take long at all for it to dry. But why that last coat's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off our dining room table so I can go ahead and get it decorated. Anytime you've had any type of like painting or caulking out, especially the area it's been setting on, it's nice to go ahead and clean it immediately because once that stuff dries, it may be harder to get it off, but it's still like damp and wet. It'll just wipe off with a damp rag. We're not young, but we're still free and running. And this day has never kept us bothering. My chairs had also gotten really dirty. We kept standing on them to like um, hang the boards up high or even paint. We did some light sanding. So they had like footprints all over them. Plus they're black. So I feel like dust shows really easy on them. They're great for kids because they're like metal. So you can just wipe them right off. But since I had that clean rag out, you're going to see me wipe them down. Cause I got you. 
I did pick up some new pillows. I was really loving the texture of this new style. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the previous pillows I had there and then add in the new ones. You are gone, that makes me blue. But here he comes to take me to. These are not new placemats. I used to have them out on my table and I loved them, but then I changed up my centerpiece and I brought out that like wood platter and I felt like it was too many like brown rectangles on my table. But recently I realized our plates are kind of starting to scratch my table. Plus I missed like the color and the texture the placemats added. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and then change up my centerpiece a little bit. Okay guys, we are finished now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you back to the before photos. I want to remind you and kind of freshen up your mind of what this space looked like because there is a change, but it's not a huge one, but I still feel like it made a big difference in how it looks and feels. So look at these photos real fast and then we will look at the after. Okay, while this looks really good, now I'm gonna show you the after. I am so happy with how it turned out. You guys know I'm a very like less is more person. I'm very simple, clutter drives me crazy. So just having the texture in here, you see texture through the placemats, through the pillows, even through the greenery, and now it's on the wall, but it's not super busy. I feel like all four photos just had a lot going on. When I looked in this corner, it just seemed very busy to me. So I am super, super happy with how this space turned out. Art. As you can tell by today's intro, this is all about DIY, do-it-yourself home projects. We've got our reno going on um, for our Airbnb, so there's a lot of rearranging going on. There's a lot of building furniture to help save money and cost because we have so much going on. So the very first thing we're gonna work on is in Savannah's room and it's her dresser. Basically, she's had this since she was about three years old and for a while she's been asking for a new one and now that I was gonna have to buy new furniture for the Airbnb, I thought this was a perfect time. She could pick out what she wanted and then I could DIY this one and put it into that space. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this one out. I am gonna be working on this next, so stay tuned for that. But first we're gonna put together the new piece we got for her room. Okay, so here is the empty spot we're gonna be working on now. So furniture in general is just kind of expensive, but if you can get it from Ikea or Amazon and put it together yourself, it's going to save you some money. If you can buy it used, I highly, highly suggest it. It saves you time, it saves you money, and you don't have to put it together. But I've been looking for several, several weeks and could not find anything in my area. So we finally bought this dresser off Amazon. I'll have it linked down below in my description box just in case you're in need of one. I think it's exactly the Ikea dresser. So if you live closer to Ikea, you could probably get it way cheaper, but we didn't have that option. We were recently at Ikea, but the box wouldn't fit into my car. We were buying so much decor and other pieces for the Airbnb, we just couldn't. But this pile of screws right here is why you should buy it used if you can. But like I said, we couldn't find it and we were running out of time because we got to start getting these projects knocked off the list so when the house is ready, we can start decorating it. But Chase is going to assemble it just to save us some money.
Okay, as you can see, we're moving on to the dresser now. So this has been painted so many different colors. So if you're looking for a dresser more on a budget and you don't find the color you want, you can still get one super cheap and not have to put it together, but just have to paint it. So when we originally bought this, it was like white, rainbow, zebra. It was basically for Savannah's room. Somebody had like detail painted it. Since then, we've painted it purple. It's been green, which you're gonna see here, and now it's gray. I would have just touched this up, but it was like a custom paint that I don't have anymore. Plus, I wanted to do a moody color. I'm sure you guys know what's coming. <laughs> so I went ahead and sanded this just because it had so many layers. Um, I felt like I needed to get some of that off to make it smooth, but if your piece is already painted, you don't necessarily have to do it. If you wanna skip that step just to get it done, go for it. But like I said, this one's just been very well loved, so I just took a little bit more effort and sanded it down, but you don't have to do that. So our intention for this was to spray this. I've never had a paint sprayer. They intimidate Chase and I. I went ahead and was putting a first layer of coat on the drawers because I didn't know how we were gonna spray those because you can't really angle the gun too much. So I thought I'd just put a coat on and then we could spray over um, as the second coat just so it had the same texture. So right here you can kind of start to see the color. Um, I'm gonna show it more up close here in a second. But now you're gonna see many attempts of us trying to work this like paint sprayer. <laughs> um, I feel like all of our nightmares came true. It just was not working. It wasn't spraying well. This is a paint sprayer we just borrowed, but I would not recommend it. You can see it's just going over and over. Once we finally do get it to like actually spray, you'll notice if you look, it's like speckled and it's like textured. So it was not working at all. So we attempted our best. We thought maybe if we kept spraying, it would like work itself out, but it didn't. So here in a second, you're gonna see us just grab our paint brushes and we're just gonna paint it like we normally do, kind of kick it old school. We always just hand paint everything. Um, if you guys know what's wrong with this, like if it's just an easy fix that we're just like completely missing, definitely let me know. We probably need to try another brand, but it's just scary. We already don't like it. Now it's like, it was just super hard and then you have to clean everything out. But if you've had this issue before, definitely let me know. order new hardware for this I think anytime you're trying to update a piece if you'll just spend a little bit money on paint or you may already own that and then some new hardware it's going to bring it back to life we ordered this hardware twice and they kept sending us the wrong size every time we finally got it in the third time but basically you're not gonna see that completed until the very end of today's video because we had to keep ordering it from Amazon so now we're gonna move on to our next project, which is this fireplace. If you've been with me from the beginning, this is like one of the few pieces that have survived me and my itch to switches and moving houses. This was even in our very first house that you guys didn't see because I wasn't on YouTube yet, but I absolutely love this piece, but it was time to change it up. We've already done a lot of changing to this piece over the years. Like it used to have like electric fireplace in it that I took out and we built like a box behind it. 
Um, it used to have like gray stones that was around it. I've painted those cream. So we've definitely DIY'd this piece throughout the years just to make it work for whatever our current style is. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be adding some moodiness, but I wanted to show the back of this because I get questions about it all the time. It was super dirty, so I'm gonna clean it first and then we will get to painting. The next thing I had Chase do before we started painting it, it had a lot of like detail on the front of it. Um, originally I loved it, but like I said, it's not really our style anymore. So I had him pop those off and I was gonna sand them down to make it smooth. <laughs> Once we popped it off for some reason, it looked like it was like cardboard back there. You're gonna see it just here on the next slide. So I sanded it as much as I could, but I could only do so much because it was like ripping it up. You can see right there, it's like super cheap, but I still feel like it looks better than having that design on it just with the style of the room and kind of what we have going on in our house right now. And I know, I know, I know the life you're living isn't that fulfilling. Let me help you out. Make your love on me. Leave your head in there. So I wanted to kind of show you the progress of the dresser. So it's pretty dry right now. Typically it doesn't take long for pieces to dry. Now I won't close the drawers for like 24 hours, but I did put them in there just so it could at least be sitting there and drying and like not all over the ground. And now we're gonna start painting the fireplace. So anytime you're painting something that's white and you're gonna paint it black, that first layer is gonna look super scary. You're gonna start thinking like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Do not panic. Typically by the second coat, it's gonna look beautiful. Worst case, you may have to go in and do touch-ups, not a whole third coat, but just like touch-ups and it will look really good. But there's always a point in a project where you panic, but just keep working through it. The dust says you started reaping all the things that you've been fighting for. Cause I know, I know, I know that what you planned out, everything that you built up isn't what you want. And I know, I know, I know the life you're living isn't that fulfilling. Let me help you out. This is what I mean by the first layer of paint. You can tell right now it looks hideous, but it's going to look so much better. So just stay tuned so you can see what the second coat looks like. Cause some dreams are meant to be broken. The reason I love this piece, you can see that back part is super wide and open. I can hide so much back there. So like our internet, router, things you plug in, all of that hides in behind this fireplace so we don't have it out sitting somewhere that I have to like hide it by. Plus it just always brings like a coziness to whatever room I have it in. I've had it in dining rooms, I've had it in bedrooms, I've had it in living rooms. I absolutely love, love, love this piece. I can't imagine ever getting rid of it. I know I will one day because it's what I do, but I've really enjoyed this piece a lot. The next thing I like to do just to make it look a little bit more realistic is add real wood, even though it's not burning, obviously. So I have this um, bug spray, it's like insect um, control. I had a sponsor with them not too long ago. I love this product. I went ahead and sprayed all that wood and let it set out my garage overnight just to make sure there was no bugs on it or anything like that before you bring it into your home. Um, and then I'm just gonna stack this up. So there's so many different ways you can do this. You can make it look nice and uniform. You can kind of make it look messy which was more of the look I was going for so I did that and then I noticed my TV was super dusty so I'm gonna clean that off and then I will show you how everything turned out And 
here is how it turned out. I am seriously in love with this. I know it's not um, what everyone would do, but I love just the pop of black in this space. Everything else is so white and neutral. You guys know I've been adding black throughout my entire house. Just like grab a can of black paint and you will just use it everywhere and it'll last you forever. And then I just love it with the pops of green um, by bringing in plants and then the wood accents. I don't know, I'm just loving kind of the, just the feel it adds into our home. Time stops. Now we're gonna move on to this project. This is my favorite project that we did for this video. I have been dying to make these. So I'm kind of showing you the supplies we bought. This wood right here, we picked up from Lowe's, but um, Home Depot has it cheaper. They just didn't have any in stock. They say every time it comes in, the same person comes in and buys all of it. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna buy it. Um, we also got these legs off Amazon to add. So I'll have those linked down below. Um, but this is one of those projects you can customize to do anything you want. So you can add whatever legs you want, you can make it whatever size you want. I will have Chase add um, down below in the description box like the measurements we used, but this is definitely something you just measure your space and do what works best for you. So on all of today's projects, we're using the Black Magic. This is what they used for our front door at our house and we found it up in our attic. Um, we've also used that, I think it was called limousine leather or something, we've used that. So limousine leather is what's on Chase's accent wall and it's like a black black. This black magic is almost more like a very, very dark charcoal black. So just depending the look you're going for, I just wanted to share those two options. so much going on with this reno for the airbnb i'm going to show you right here this is everything we've been buying so anytime i'm out in stores i'm just buying it and cramming it in our closet basically we have to furnish an entire house so anywhere we can save money we're trying to do that so that's why we're doing a lot of these diy projects today um, the current one we're working on now is nightstands so we're making this for both bedrooms so we're actually going to be making four of them these are actually super easy to make. So it's just like making a box. And like I mentioned earlier, I'll have Chase leave the measurements down below, but you can totally customize this to your area. If you wanna paint these, you can paint them. You can use any stain you want to. You can make any size that you need to. It's a super cool project and I cannot wait to show you the end of this. They turned out amazing. Once Chase is finished putting them together, I'm gonna to take my wood filler and fill in the nails. If you don't have a nail gun, you could use screws on this. We're just kind of using what we have. You can totally just do what works best for you. But like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and use stainable wood filler because I want it to be able to stain. Now, if we were gonna be painting these, that wouldn't matter, but we are gonna stain them. So just be careful on that. And then go ahead and let that dry for a little bit and then sand it down so it's nice and smooth. Since 
Chase did have to cut this wood. It kind of gets rough around the edges. I didn't want to use my real sander because it would make the edges more round. So I just took a hand sander and just made sure there was no like loose wood so nobody would get a splinter. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start the cleanup. There's always a ton of sawdust after Chase cuts wood, but it's also kind of super satisfying to clean up afterwards. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right here. Now we're gonna move on to the stain and I chose the golden oak. Um, you could buy the lot smaller can of this. It does not take much at all. They just didn't have it in that color and I really wanted to do this golden oak. This thing will last me forever. I could do a billion projects with this. So like I'm saying, if you could get the smaller sample size, go ahead and do it and save money. Um, I'm gonna show you a comparison here in a second of what this looks like next to the raw wood. But I didn't wanna go super dark because we're doing a lot of black in the house. We're leaving the original hardwood floors, which are like a dark wood. So I wanted to brighten it up some. So that's why we went with this golden oak um, for the stain. When you're staining, if you're new at this or haven't done it before, it's best to go with the like grain of the wood. Sometimes that's hard when it's like in a box like this, but definitely do your best to go the direction that the wood goes. Um, and if you want it to go a little bit deeper, I've always heard you can like get a wet cloth and kind of wipe the wood down with water, like with a damp cloth, not like super wet and then put the stain on. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Someday we will look back and our hearts will be And also, in my opinion, staining is so much easier than painting. So if you're debating between the two, um, I feel like stain lasts longer. You do need to seal it if you're gonna have like water cups and different things on it, but it is so much easier. I feel like it dries faster. Now I'm all about painting things black, white, and gray, but staining is a lot easier. So right here, I'm gonna show you the two clips of like the raw wood versus the stained. Um, so you can get an idea, but right here, you can really see the richness that the stain brings to it. So right here, you're starting to see all four boxes, but now we're gonna go ahead and start adding the legs to it. So I always feel like it's easier just to buy legs by any style you want. We wanted to add that black accent in there. I had originally priced um, just to have these made or if I bought them already made, and they were gonna be anywhere from like 80 to 90 bucks, and we made them for $40 each. So $40 is still a little bit 
expensive. You could do it cheaper, maybe if you got cheaper wood or cheaper legs. It's still a really good price if you've priced any nightstands. Furniture in general is just pricey. So I was super happy with this. It saved us some money on having to buy it. I would love to have bought and used, but like I said, I have been searching Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, garage sales. It's like nobody's getting rid of their stuff right now. Um, if you can find that stuff used, totally do it. I love buying used pieces. You can just clean them up. You can DIY them. You can leave them as is. It just depends on the condition you get them in. But we weren't that lucky. And so trying to save money, we just went ahead and built these ourselves. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put like a poly on the top. Um, I am gonna put coasters on the nightstands, but just in case somebody does set their drink on it, I wanna make sure it's protective. On wood pieces like this, I like to use the clear mat. So the wood doesn't look like it has any gloss to it. If you want that glossy look, go ahead and get the gloss or the satin finish, but we did go with the matte. And as you can see, it's kind of wobbly right here. We won't adjust those legs until we're in the new house so we can adjust it to the floors there. If your nightstands are gonna be on carpet, it won't even matter, but if not, you can just adjust them to the floor in that space. But here's how they turned out. I love them. I'm about to show you the dresser and how it turned out. Cause all you gotta smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time. Comment, say hi, hit the bell so I know I'll see you next time. Smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time. Comment, say hi, hit the bell so I know I'll see you next time. Next time. guys are gonna love this transformation. I'm showing you all the before clips before we get started so you can see this space. It was not a huge walk-in closet like you're thinking, but I was still able to turn it into a kid's room and that's with two twin beds. You may just be looking for a small space for a nursery or just one kid. Maybe it's not for an Airbnb, but you have more children than bedrooms. I hope this inspires you and makes you look at your home a little bit differently. And I know our lives will always change But our hearts forever stay the same You can tell by this clip alone, this is a super bright room. So the light's not even on, it just gets tons of natural light which is all good until it's a kid's room and it's morning time. So I wanted to put up these bamboo shades that we ordered off Amazon, just so if you're coming to stay here or if Savannah's staying in there, we can close them and it keeps the room really dark in the morning or in the afternoon or evening whenever you need it to. These are super easy to, to install and they're actually kid friendly because they don't have any cords on them. You just pull them up and down and they can stay wherever you want them. If they, you want them halfway open, all the way open, shut, wherever you can adjust the height on them every single day. I love having them. This is like a close up of them right here and they come in like all different colors of wood. You got my love, don't let it go. Feels like we're paper thin, one step away. So this room has already come a long way, but we didn't have to do much to it. Basically, they painted all the walls white. We added the new fan. Now the wall on the right, they did shiplap it because I don't know if you guys remember or if you saw the clips in the beginning, but there used to be a door there that they blocked off. So we had that fixed on the inside of the house and outside, and then he shiplapped it just to give the wall just a little bit of interest, and I love it over there. But other than that, that was it. We kept the same floor, we painted the walls white, that was it. 
So we've done the light, we've done the window coverings, now let's work on the floor, and I picked up a new rug from Boutique Rugs. I do have a coupon code with them, so if you guys are ever looking for like rugs, or decor for your house, you can use Ash60 and I'll leave that link down below in my description box. I wanted to find a very fun rug for this space. It's a small area, it's a kid's room, and originally I had thought about ordering this rug in the opposite color, so it was white with like black crosses on it. And then I got to thinking, you know, white's really hard for a kid's space, and so I switched it out last minute, and I'm so glad I did. When it came in and I opened it up, I was so excited when I saw it. I think it's gonna play off really well because the walls are so white, and you're gonna see here in a little bit the bedding's white, so it really just seems to ground it and I feel like it matches even the bed really well. This tool right here that Chase is using was actually a gift from Chase's dad and it has come in handy so much. So I thought I'd mention it here just because Christmas is around the corner. So if you're needing like a good guy gift for either a husband or a boyfriend, even a son or somebody that, you know, builds a lot of stuff or is always working on stuff, I'm gonna leave that link down below. It came from Amazon and I'm telling you, it'll save you so much time. These beds I found on Amazon as well. Are you guys like catching on to this? I ordered a lot from there. And then this artwork we're about to hang, I actually wanted and found it on Amazon. But by the time I found it, one of them was like out of stock and I really wanted like matching pieces, but I didn't want them to be exactly the same. So I thought, okay, I'll just search somewhere else. I happened to get on Facebook Marketplace and someone was selling the exact set I wanted. I got them for $15 each and I love them. And then I decided to add lights over them. Now you could wire these into the wall or behind the wall so you don't see the cord, but I wanted to show you an easy way that you can let the cord hang and just put the picture over it and it still turned out really, really well. What's really nice about these lights is they just plug in, so you don't have to like hardwire them into anything. They also take normal light bulbs, which is a win, because sometimes you just never know. And like I said, I love that it's just hanging down on the wall, because it actually has a switch, and it's right behind the headboard, so if your kids are staying there, or Savannah's staying there, and it's dark, and they want some light, or they're reading, they can flip it on and off from bed. I love that so much. I definitely need to get some of these for my current house, because I just feel like they look really good and then they're really functional as well. So now that we got it all done on the right side, we're just going to redo all of that for the left side. Just in case you're interested in any of this, the artwork, the lights, the blinds, the beds, I'm gonna link everything that I can down below in my description box, just in case you're in the market for something like this or wanna read more details about it, just click down below in the description box.
So now we're gonna start working on the beds and I do wanna thank Purple for gifting us all the mattresses for the Airbnb. They were so generous to do that. I mentioned this in our last video. I wanted whoever stayed there, whether it's us, your family, just guests that we don't know, I wanted them to feel at home and I wanted them to be comfortable. One of my biggest things on vacation is I just can't wait to get home and to sleep back in my bed and I did not want that experience for anybody else. I want you guys to never Never want to leave and never want to get out of bed and it just be so cozy and just feel like home away from home so thank you so much to purple for sending us these mattresses I can't wait to test all of them out If you're new here, I kind of want to get you caught up. Um, I do have another house that I do all my cleaning and where we live, but we recently bought this house as an Airbnb, so we did a complete reno on it. So if you want to watch any of those videos, definitely go back. And then a few days ago, I posted a master bedroom makeover. And then coming up next, I think it's going to be like a living room bathroom makeover. But basically for like the next month and a half, I'm going to have tons of makeover videos of just things going on in this house. So if you like cleaning or organizing or makeovers, I'm definitely the place you want to be. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. This room was just a lot of repeating ourselves. So whatever we did to the left side, we did to the right side, and whatever we did to the right side, we did to the left. So at least the second time we did it, we always got faster and we got better just because we had already done it on the previous side. to play your own game cover it up don't let them know what you're thinking i bet you never tell them how it feels i bet you never even try to be real you won't go for them i had been on the hunt for a nightstand slash dresser i didn't need a full-size dresser but i needed a bigger nightstand to go in between these two beds I wanted it to be, you know, a good size piece, but I didn't want it to block the window. And I got on Facebook Marketplace um, back when we first bought the house and I found this and I knew it would be perfect for the space. And then, you know, month, two months into it, I found the pictures and I swear they were made to go together. And both pieces weren't far from this house at all. Like they were just a few minutes away, which I feel like is so funny. Um, but like I said, definitely check out Facebook Marketplace. You can find the best deals on there and it'll save you so much money. Now it's time to start doing some decorating with accessories. Would it really be a kid's room if we didn't have any fidgets in there? So you will see here in a moment, I do kind of itch to switch and move the toys, but we want this place to be completely furnished for whoever stays here. So there's gonna be toys, there's gonna be strollers, there's gonna be pack and plays, there's gonna be high chairs, there's gonna be bikes and wagons. I just want somebody to be able to like throw all their clothes in a bag and just come and stay and let us host you and just have everything that you need. I'm sorry that's the way it is, yeah. Don't you think like that? I will love you endlessly if you don't really believe in me. Don't I did decide to go ahead and move those toys. It was just too much color when you walked into the room. Um, and I replaced it with a lamp we had. I had originally thought of putting this here and then I kind of backed out because I'm like, there's, you know, two windows. We have 
two lights above the bed, so we technically don't need the light, but I feel like it just looks best in this space, so that's why I went with that. Plus, it's got a phone charger in it, so if there's like older kids staying here, they can still charge their phone easily without having to like find the outlet behind the bed. So all the mattress covers and like sheets, pillowcases, all the bedding is coming from Amazon and I'll have all that linked down below in the description box. You're not gonna see me put the sheets on the bed because I actually forgot to get them out of the dryer. I'm like washing all the bedding at home at night and then when I come the next day out here to like film and decorate and stage, I bring it with me and it totally slipped my mind that it was in the dryer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the mattress cover on and the comforter. It's basically gonna look just the same because the sheets are white as well, but I'm loving the sheets. I'm using the same brand throughout to the entire house. I love it so much. Um, the comforters, everything I've liked so far, I've ordered so much in and if I didn't like it, we sent it back and ordered more. So everything that's on these beds is gonna be super soft and just high quality. So complicated. All I wanted was your love. It is time to should we break it? Cause I'm not staying anymore. I've been waiting here before. It is not the first time. Thinking that you'll change this time. No, I don't need a heartbreak. I don't need I was totally off my game this day because I actually forgot the pillows as well. So I do have pillowcases and there will be two just like standard size pillows on each bed, but I forgot life happens and I still had to film. But this at least gives you the idea. I also wanted to put some stuffed animals out there. Both of these are from Ikea, just in case you're wondering. Just so if your kids come in, it just feels like a cozy, safe place for them. It is not the first time thinking that you'll come around. I've been waiting here before. It is not the first time thinking that you'll change this time. No, I I did want to add just a blanket to the edge of the bed just to add a little bit of interest and just in case if a child would get cold they had a blanket right there that they could just grab and reach they didn't have to like get in a closet or anything and I found those on major clearance at Kohl's so don't forget to check out stores like that as well but here is how everything's looking I'm gonna show you some before clips along with some after clips so you can see how far this room has come This is your true definition of a no demo reno. I hope this inspires you guys and just makes you look at your house a little bit differently. Definitely use your home the way you need it to. It doesn't have to work for everybody. It just has to work for you. So I hope this just gave you some motivation to make some changes in your house if you need to. I have a ton more makeover videos coming out, so make sure you're subscribed. Next time, so I know I'll see you next time. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. 
But right now I'm showing you all these before clips of the backed patio of our new Airbnb. Um, I wanted to just show you how it started because this transformation is huge. As you can see right here, we had the house painted white, so you're getting a little sneak peek of the back. But that alone made a huge difference and just the look and the feel of the house. So that's the only work that we had done. The rest of it's gonna be all DIY. It's gonna be all Chase and I, and I cannot wait to show you the end. It is a huge transformation. I cannot tell you how thankful I am that this house came with a shed. Just storing stuff right now, especially with the reno going on, it's just so nice. We can keep stuff locked up back there, um, like out of sight, out of mind. But the first thing we're gonna do is work on the deck. So I'm so thankful this deck was there, but it was definitely needing some love. As you can see, we pulled Savannah, our daughter, into this. I think it's really good to get kids involved, especially on easy stuff that they can do. It's very satisfying to them and rewarding, and it just teaches them a little bit about hard work. So some of the nails and screws were popping up. So one day we just went over there, she grabbed a hammer and we started nailing all of those down. So we went to stain it. All of that was like nice and flush. And um, a lot of our gutters were painted. They took them off and Chase is about to be power washing. So we wanted to get those away. They're pretty dry, but we didn't want to get them really wet with water. So he's going to go ahead and move those away from the deck before we get started. Now we're gonna start the power washing process. So even if you don't have it in you to stain, power washing is gonna make a really huge difference um, with your wood. So even if you don't have a power washer, you can probably rent one, you can buy them, they're pretty affordable, or you can hire somebody. I know companies do this, it's just whatever's in your price range. For us, we knew um, power washing and staining the deck would save us thousands. And since we're spending so much on the inside, anything we can do, we're gonna do it just to help with the overall budget of this whole reno. Um, so as you can see, Chase is cleaning it off. What's really nice is there was like a lot of water stains on it from the previous owners. They had like, you know, pots or planters out here. It cleaned all of that up. So if you have any of those issues with your wood, decks, fencing, whatever it is, a good power washing will really clean it up and just make it look fresh again. This next clip right here, you can already see the difference that just power washing it has made. Okay, so the patio makeover is starting. We're gonna start staining the deck. You guys saw the clips of Chase power washing. We have all of our supplies to work on this. Luckily, nobody is working on the house today, so hopefully we should have it all to ourselves. We're starting early just so um, it won't get as hot. The sun's still like on that side of the house because in the evening it's over here and it gets just a little bit hot. Um, it's cooling off now with it getting closer to fall, but I'm sure before next summer we're going to have to add like a covered patio, but since it's cooling off, we're not going to get that yet and we'll wait and take a break when all the reno's done and add it on later. This is the stain we chose for the deck and the color. We went with a chocolate and we went with a semi-transparent. There are so many options. I swear we stood inside Home Depot for about 45 minutes just looking at stains, trying to figure it out. So there's lots of options. I feel like staining it's really worth it. It's gonna extend the life of our deck. That's definitely not something we wanna replace anytime soon. So just power washing it. Staining it, this has like a sealer in it, so it's gonna help protect that wood. It's just gonna extend the life of it, and that's definitely what we want. So it took about three days worth of work between like 
prepping it and then power washing and now staining it. We kind of had to break it up just because we have other things going on. Um, it probably would have taken like one full day if we had like a full day to do it. It's just we've been super busy with so much going on. Um, the spindles are always going to be the hardest part just because there's so much detail to them. But guys, you're not going to believe what this looks like when we're finished. So watch, watch us put some labor of love into this deck for you guys and then I'll show you how it turns out. So we chose to start with the hardest part because that's where we were going to have the most energy. We knew the morning that was when it's going to be the coolest. And then as we got tired and as the day got warmer, we did just the floor, which was super easy to do. Um, you'll see here in a second how we did that. But my biggest thing is buy all the supplies you think you're going to need, even overbuy because you can return it. Um, but we didn't have enough stain. We had to leave it twice to go pick up more stain and like the closest Home Depot didn't have it. So we had to drive further. We definitely underestimated um, what we needed. So we ended up using like two and a half cans. So we have about half a can left, which is good because we're going to be doing DIY shutters for the front of the house. So I can use that stain up there so it all matches. And then make sure you have the right tools. So whatever brushes you need or sponges, definitely buy plenty because you're going to go through them on wood because sometimes it's a little rough and you don't want to have to stop a project. You want to just be able to like keep going so you can keep that motivation. Um, but I thought this scene right here was so satisfying. You can just see how it covers that wood and makes it look so much nicer. Right here is a little bit of a before and after. You can see we're going a little bit darker. We're going with that chocolate stain um, and it just makes it feel new and fresh again. And it was so satisfying when Chase finished this last spot. I don't know, just to know we put in all that hard work. It looked great. We saved a ton of money. It was definitely a win-win and we got an amazing workout in the process. One step away. Now we're gonna move on to the next project, which is our lighting. Can you really do a patio makeover without adding some really cool lighting out there? Plus our back patio doesn't have a light on the back, so this is gonna be amazing. And we're gonna put this on a timer so it just comes on every evening for whoever's staying there. And once again, would this even be a till vacuum DIY if I wasn't using a spray paint in some way, shape, or form? So I'm going to start spraying all of this hardware because we're going to use it to hang the lights. So if you've watched any of our last patio makeovers, we did one at our current house, at our previous house, and we normally do like the planter um, boxes with concrete in them and I can plant flowers. We're not doing this here because we have a deck, so we are going to add some poles. I wanted those poles to be black so they match the lighting um, so that was why I was spray painting them and it turned out super cool here we're trying to figure out the height so Chase can cut them um, also the way this house is wired we have those electrical cords right there so we were trying to figure out how high it could go um, and we didn't end up putting it that close we just wanted to make sure though that the lights would be hanging underneath that so that's why he was so close to those wires right there but I promise you we were being super careful You'll get weary of my touch. The lights actually came with these clamps and it did um, clamp on really well, but we're here in Oklahoma and it is super, super windy here, or it can be. Plus, since this isn't our permanent residence and we're not going to be there every day, we wanted to make sure these were like in the deck, that they weren't going to blow away, we weren't going to have any issues, our guests weren't going to have any issues. So that's all the hardware we bought to spray. Chase ended up putting like four of these hooks on there. I'll show you at the end just to make sure they were not going to budge in any wind. <laughs> um, but like I said, if you don't live in a windy state like us, the clamps that came with it would actually work very 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 well
When you're doing a patio makeover, I think there's just certain things you can do that really just sets the mood and the tone and lighting is incredible. You could skip painting of the house, you could skip um, staining of the deck and just get like a chair out there with lighting and it is huge. So that's one area if you have a small budget, definitely get some lighting because it just totally changes the mood of the space. Now Chase and I are going to go ahead and start screwing in the bulbs. What I liked about these, it kind of came with smaller bulbs um, than like ones I've worked with in the past. So then they don't hang down as low because you definitely don't want men coming and like whacking their head on a light. So I was super, super impressed with them. I love the black against the white house. I think it turned out gorgeous and then here in a second um, if you hang on real tight I'm gonna show you the mosquito repellent and how that works Okay, so now this is the mosquito repellent and it does come with the lighting. It reminds me of like our air plugins you put in your house. You just screw the lid off and then you screw it in. So they have special places where the bulbs don't go, but those screw in. If you've ever had a boba drink, that's what it reminds me of with those little balls in there. But that shows you if you're getting low. So when those green balls are at the bottom, I know I need to refill them. That's super helpful because they're up high. And then it comes with an on and off switch. So say I'm out there during the day and I don't want to waste the mosquito repellent I just don't turn them on but as soon as it gets dark and I feel like the bugs are coming out I can just go flick that on and then it'll start releasing it so I thought that was super cool so you don't have to waste it all the time but now we're getting to the fun part which is decorating this is always the best part of the video it's always so much work in the beginning and then the fun parts decorating um, a lot almost all this furniture is from Amazon so you don't have to spend a ton to make a space look gorgeous you can do it on a budget I got a smaller rug for out here um, I got some black furniture so let me just get this decorated and by all means do not click off yet you guys are gonna die when you see the end of this Okay, so I always get asked what I do with cushions when it's storming. I'll probably have to just get a storage bin out there like I do at my current house. And if I know it's gonna be raining or if it's like the winter, I'll just stick those in there. But then when people are going out there, the guests can just go in the storage bin, pick out the cushions, put them out there so they stay dry. Now in Oklahoma, we have long streaks of where it's just dry and hot. Then they can just stay out and that's totally fine. But I'll just keep a little plastic storage cushion container out there and then anytime I need to put them away I can. Back to Here at the Airbnb, I'm not gonna really do real plants because I don't know how often I can be there and if somebody else waters it for me and I don't know it, I feel like it would just be really hard to keep real plants alive. So here I'll just be staging with a lot of faux plants, but I feel like they can look amazing. Um, right here you can get a glimpse into how dirty the reno is. If you look at our wood deck, like all the white dust comes out. Um, but Chase had been inside putting the grill together while I was outside decorating. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and set this up real quickly. Okay, so I think the grill's the perfect spot for there, A, because it fits so well, but the other thing is, like, this is my kitchen window, so I can, like, pass, oh, <laughs> it doesn't stay up. So I can pass, chase, like, the cheese or the buns, or he can pass in the hamburger. See, he can just poke on it. This doesn't stay up, though, so if you come here, be careful, it's like a super heavy window. But isn't that perfect? I think it's so sweet. 
the next scene, I'm gonna show you um, a game Chase had picked up. We have something like this on our patio, but Chase had found this on Amazon. We have been playing with this nonstop at our house. We're actually gonna have to order this one that we're bringing this one over here, but it's just a little fun game to play. So if you guys do happen to stop by the Airbnb, you can play with it outside, you can take it inside. And I know this isn't gonna shock you, but Chase actually beat me. <laughs> I think it's coming together so well, but I'm gonna definitely show you how that fire pit works here in a second. And then I also went back late that evening so you guys can see what it looks like lit up. So definitely hang tight for those clips. Okay, so with this fire pit, you have two options. You can get this wood pack bag and all you do is light all four corners and then it burns for about 30 minutes. It's a huge flame. Um, you'll see it here in a second, or you can just use real wood. So it gives you the option for either or, but I just think it's such a beautiful fire pit. It goes well in the space. It looks very modern and trendy. So I love how it turned out. Now I'm gonna show you some clips after dark. This is when all those products I've been talking to you guys about just light up at night and sets the mood. Don't forget, if you're gonna put the fire pit out on a wood deck like this, be super careful. Make sure you get a fireproof mat. Be safe, don't have any accidents. It's better off just to have it away from the house, like on gravel or concrete. Today's video is a really good one. I'm showing you how to do like a faux tile wall. This would probably only cost you about $20 max. For me, it was way less because we already had the tape and the paint brushes. We did have to pick up some paint pens. I grabbed it two packs because I didn't know how much it would take and we were about to hit a winter storm and I just wanted to have them on hand, but we didn't need two packs at all. We even have some left over from the first package. And then we just ran and grabbed a tile that we liked the shape and the size. So you could pick any shape, any size. Um, you could even make this out of cardboard. I suggest just making sure when you cut it, it has very clean lines. I was gonna show you here the hexagon tile my backsplash has in my kitchen was really small. So if you're doing a good size wall, I would go with a larger tile unless you don't mind being tedious and taking a long time. Now, if you're just gonna do like the backsplash of your kitchen, it would be fine. But if you're gonna be doing a really large wall, like a fireplace, um, or like we did in our laundry room, we opted for a little bit bigger tile just so it would go quickly. So now that you know everything you need to go ahead and get started, I think the one thing I didn't mention was paint, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Now I'm just going to start clearing off my shelves because originally we were going to just do the wall between like the bottom of the shelves and then the washer and dryer, but Chase had the idea of just going all the way up the wall and we were snowed in, so why not? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and clear off the shelves and then even get those clean. There's a lot of dust up there and you definitely don't want that mixing in with wet paint. So we're going to go ahead and just prep this area. While I'm working on clearing off these shelves, I thought we'd talk pricing just for a little bit. The two pack of paint pens were around $5. And then the tile we chose was like $1.52 or something around that. 
I did grab two of them just in case we dropped it and one broke. Once again, this was all happening during like a snowstorm, so I knew we couldn't like get back out, nor would we want to anyways. So I just went ahead and picked up two tiles. You don't have to do that. You don't even have to do the tile. For us, that was just easier, but you could cut out your own design, like out of cardboard or like a really, um, like really sturdy plastic or something like that. I know you guys are way more creative than me, so I'm sure you can come up with something, but that would even save you a couple dollars. And then the tape, even if you have masking tape at home, that would work. And then as far as paint goes, use whatever you have. We have tons of leftover paint, so we didn't even have to buy that. But if you need to buy it, you could just buy a smaller bin of it, a sample size, just kind of assess how much paint you actually need going up on your wall and just grab something small. Just another reminder, um, we have a video where we created these shelves here in the laundry room. So when we bought this house, it was just that floating small cabinet and it just seemed so odd for the space. I wish he would have put like two cabinets side by side so we'd have like four doors, but he didn't and that's okay. So Chase came in and created these shelves. So I'll try to remember to link that video down below in my description box just in case you need something like that as well. Okay, so as you can see, everything's been taken off and removed that we can. I've cleaned it all up. So now that all of that's done, Chase is gonna come in and he's gonna move out the washer and dryer. We didn't wanna like completely unhook them. So we just pulled them out enough that he could get back there and work cause it's gonna be easier than trying to like lean over them the whole time. So you may or may not have to do this. It just depends on where you're gonna be putting this wall in your house. Up next is to start taping off the area that you're gonna paint. I know some people don't always do this. If you're not gonna do this, you have to have a very good brush and a very steady hand. And still, it's really hard because we're gonna be using black paint. So if it goes over at all, you're gonna see it. If you're doing two kind of colors that are alike, you could skip this, but I always suggest taping off. It takes a little more time and a lot more work, but it's always worth it at the end because it's gonna look way more professional when you pull it off and there's like straight lines. So this is definitely optional, but if it were me, I would just go ahead and do it. Now we're trying to decide where we want it to end because if this was actual backsplash tile, it wouldn't go all the way below the washer and dryer. So we're trying to decide where it's gonna end and we want it to end even. Like we don't want it to end where like we only do half the tile. Um, so Chase was just measuring it out with a pencil so we knew exactly where to tape off. And as always, our sidekicks slash supervisors are over there taking a nap while we're on the job, but they definitely keep us in line. And then I wanted to show you kind of the stuff that I had taken off. Um, when you're doing a project, I just want you to know it always gets worse before it gets better. There's gonna be clutter everywhere. Um, and I also wanted to show you the paint that we're using just in case you like it. We like this limousine leather. We've really been liking this black and we get it in the matte finish. I don't know if Lowe's does that. I know Home Depot does. We buy paint from both. Go wherever the paint is the cheapest, do what you gotta do. This one's a little bit higher end because it's just like a one coat. Um, layer you don't have to do several layers on it which is super nice we may have to like touch up a few spots that we missed but that's about it so I'm gonna show you Chase is done taping it looks really good it was actually funny seeing a, like a pop of blue in there for some reason I liked it but now we're gonna go ahead and open up this paint and it is one we've used before so it's older so we're gonna go ahead and stir it up to make sure it's nice and fresh and then Chase is gonna get to painting
So for us with this project, the hardest part or most tedious part was just taping off. If you can see, there's really not that much wall space here since the washer and dryer butt up to it and they have the big cabinets and the shelves. So we're gonna go ahead and just paint around this because we wanted our tile to look black. So you don't have to use black, you could do white or any color tile choice you would want pick that as your paint. And then when it comes to your paint pen, we chose white because that's what color we wanted the grout. But if you wanted like a white wall with black grout, just buy accordingly. Um, the next thing I really wanna do, I don't know where yet, is kind of like a white wall with like gold grout. I haven't decided where I'm gonna put it or the shape or style the tile would be, but it is something I wanna tackle. Just, I wanna see how it would turn out. This is a really cool way to improve your home or a wall in your home if you're on a tight budget. Maybe you don't even have a tight budget, but you don't wanna hire in a crew to come do it. Or maybe you don't wanna do it yourself or you don't want tons of tile and real grout to clean. This is gonna be a lot easier to maintain. And then worst case scenario, if you don't like the color, if you don't like the style or the shape or the grout, you can literally just paint over this. You don't have a lot of cost into it. Um, so I feel like it's just an easy little way to update your house. I would have killed for this tip in our first house because in our kitchen we didn't have a backsplash and it just drove me crazy, but we never had the money to have it installed. And then even the pill and stick tile was super pricey back then and we just didn't have it in our budget. I totally would have tackled this when I painted our kitchen cabinets in the house. So at least for you guys, if you're on a tight budget or if you just wanna try it out, I think this is such a cool project to do. So the options are endless when it comes to this. This would be great for a fireplace, just an accent wall, backsplash, laundry room, bathrooms. Think of all the places you could do um, just like a tile wall. It's just so neat. It would be really cool in like a guest bathroom. I've even seen this done with like faux shiplap walls where you paint the wall white and then you use a black Sharpie and just do straight lines and it looks like shiplap. So if you're not wanting the tile look, you could do that wall anywhere in your house, your TV wall, anything. So. Just keep in mind, just because you don't have a big budget does not mean you can't have a beautiful home. I stress that all the time here on my channel. You just have to get creative. Okay, now Chase is doing the satisfying part of taking off the tape. I love filming this part for you guys. You love it. I love watching it. I love editing it. It's just so cool to watch him pull off the tape and just see a straight line. But now we're getting to the good part where he's going to basically just outline the tile and start tiling, you know, faux tiling up this wall. Now say you already have a black wall or the accent wall you're wanting. You may be able to skip every step we've done thus far and you can just get a tile and a paint pen and go to town painting it. So keep that in mind. We just needed to paint ours because we wanted it to have some contrast from the other walls. But it's as easy as just sticking the tile up there. We did start in the very center so it will go out evenly and he's just tracing it. And then all you're going to do is pick it up and move it and now you're just going to start lining up the tiles. There's no like measuring, there's nothing crazy. You have the tile, you just line it up, trace it. I could do this, your child could probably do this. It was so easy and it actually moved way faster than I was expecting it to. This is why I suggested earlier, if you're gonna trace your own shape, make sure it has a really straight edge because if it's bumpy at all, your paint marks may look bumpy. You want something with a super straight edge. And like I said, this tile was only like a dollar fifty something, so it's not that expensive anyways. You could pick out any style you wanted in any of the stores. But if you are stuck at home and you have all the paint supplies, 
you can cut something out just make sure it's super super straight because you want your tile to look really nice when you're putting it on there another little tip is the paint pen was kind of hard to work with when he was down below because the paint was rushing backwards instead of forwards so occasionally I would just switch him pins and I would push on it for a little bit until the paint started coming out but once he started working more on the higher shelf area and the pin was facing down, he didn't have any issues. But if you're doing a wall like ours where he's kind of like squatting and so the pin, all the paint's running to the back, you will have a little bit of a problem. But you guys can just tag team it and keep those pins, switching them back and forth so the paint keeps staying towards the front. But right here, it was just flying through. I thought it would take us forever to do something like this and it took us maybe like 45 minutes to tile up this whole wall if it was even that long. Now when it came to the edges he did grab a ruler to like finish it off because the tile wouldn't fit in that area but I also ran out to my garage. I had some like Amazon boxes left over and I took the tile and traced it and cut it out. Now it's on this cardboard piece, so this piece can actually bend. So if we need it to bend in a corner or underneath a shelf, he can switch it out right here. You can see him using it. And it did make life a little easier on the areas that like the hard tile would have broke if we were trying to put it there. So you might need to do that as well. And just like that, that part of the wall was done. So originally that's all we were gonna do. That would have taken no time at all. But like I said earlier, Chase wanted to go up the wall and I'm so glad we decided to do that because it made such a huge impact at the end. So you're gonna watch him just slowly go up and we're trying to carry on the pattern like it would if it was real tile. So definitely line it up so the pattern stays the same. If you start a completely different pattern, it's gonna look messy. Now you can hide any mess ups with like a plant or decor like these shelves are going to have stuff on them so keep that in mind these weren't done perfectly but once it's done and decorated even once it was done you just don't notice because it is like a busier pattern um and i'm so so happy with how this turned out like i said it did not take long at all this could be done for under 20 bucks i'm gonna go ahead and get this decorated so you guys can see what it looks like finished I'm in my jammies now because it was later in the day and like I said we were snowed in so if you want to know why I have that on <laughs> it's not a new day I was just getting comfy um, but now I'm gonna start putting things back up I did pull out all the black decor now um, just because now I have a black wall so it's not gonna pop against it and there's plenty of black over there so I'm grabbing more like wicker and gold because whatever I want to put on this shelf I want it to pop against it so anything concrete and gray the greens look awesome like I said I'm really loving the wicker to break it up but just keep in mind if you have like a solid black wall you don't want tons of black decor because it's just gonna kind of blend into it so this little nook that used to just be like a floating cabinet on a white wall it did not stand out at all it was just super boring is now beautiful it makes a statement i don't know it just has such a wow factor and for us it was like under six bucks to make that possible so once again i'm going to reference it you do not need a ton of money to make your home beautiful you just have to get creative we went from boring to beautiful for six dollars Thank you. 
When you have shelves like this, it takes a little bit of rearranging. I would put stuff on, take it off, and I'm trying to balance the side. So if I have wicker on the left bottom, I'm trying to put wicker on the top right. Basically just making it all make sense and balancing, but also functioning because in these wicker bins, it's like my little trash cans for um, all my dryer lint. So I wanted to keep those low as well. So basically this is how it ended up and I'm so happy with it but I can't end this until I show you all the befores. So here is how it started out originally. And then once I took everything off and cleaned it, that was it plain. And then of course the final reveal is here. I love it. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so you can put these accent walls anywhere in your home. I think they're amazing in hallways and bathrooms and living rooms, but we're actually gonna be putting it in Chase's office. He's been wanting to do some type of custom wall back here. You can see it's like super plain. We have super high ceilings. If you've been with us long enough, we did a really cool wall in his last office at the last house, but it wasn't gonna work in this one just because we had like vaulted ceilings and we didn't know how to pull it off. Plus we just wanted to try something different um, so we thought what the hey let's try this out so the very first thing I'm gonna do is clear out that space I'm not gonna take everything out of the bedroom just because we're not touching the other side of the room but anything that's over on that side we're gonna go ahead and get moved Also, just a little fun fact about me, I despise any type of cord, extension cords, so I always just tuck mine in between like the carpet and the baseboard. You can see I'm pulling it up there. It's super easy to do and I talk about it in a lot of my videos. I know some of the steps when you're gonna be like painting or doing a makeover can be a little tedious and exhausting, but I promise you just by taking a little bit to get it done, your project's gonna look so much more professional when you're finished and that's the whole goal. So just take a few extra minutes and tape off and I promise you, you won't regret it. I'm also gonna go ahead and lay down these bed sheets just so we don't get any paint on the floor. Okay, so we got the sheets put down. Um, I always just save old bed sheets um, anytime we're like redecorating or switching things out instead of like trashing them or donating them, selling them. I always save them for painting projects. And then I always say to keep supplies on hand because you're more likely to get projects done. They sell these kits where you can just buy everything you need. So I find those super helpful. And when it comes to project time, you just open it up and you have all the tools to get started. Okay, and then here is the paint we went with. I know you guys always wanna know what we're using. Um, I wanted a one coat paint. And so I asked them what the best thing was, and this is what they said. Um, we looked at lots of different black colors. You would think just painting your wall black, it wouldn't be that hard, but there's a lot of blacks, there's a lot of whites, there's a lot of grays. So we went with the limousine leather. I'll show you right here. You can go ahead and screenshot this just in case you need it later, or you can just come back and reference the video. But this is what we're gonna be using to get this wall painted.
calling. I'm falling. Don't know what it is you do to me. Yeah. Where you go? I follow. Let's go out and dance the night away. Going like one, two, three. Okay, so it still has to dry. Um, because we actually chose a flat based paint because we want it to have like that matte feel so it's still a little shiny and wet right now but I think it's gonna look so good so even if you don't want to take the time and add um, like all the wood elements which I think is gonna make it pop even more you could just do a pop of color on a wall and it's super easy and simple to do and really doesn't take much time I think the hardest part is just always getting started to like convince yourself to do it but it's looking so good. I just wish my camera went back more so you could see how it's turning out. Now we're gonna go ahead and start making the cuts of the wood. Now there's all different ways to do this. You can even just buy molding that's already pre-cut. We wanted to just be able to cut our own, so that's how we're gonna do it. So you can customize it a little bit more, but there's lots of options just in case you don't have the right saw or tool. Just go in, pick a fun molding, and you can cut those down to size as needed. Give the kiss now. I just wanna hold you close to me. I really like you. Okay, so Chase is out cutting the wood, but as you can see, the paint is dry in here. You can see a little bit right there. That's just my blinds and windows shining in, um, but it looks gorgeous. I love this color. So once again, if you're looking for a good black, it was Limousine Leather by Bear, and it went on so well. Like I said, we did the flat finish, and I'm so glad we went with that because it's got almost like a matte feel. So I can't wait to start putting up the boards, which we'll be doing really, really soon. You like me? Don't you wanna see what this could be? I am ready for the heartbreak. That's usually how it goes. I have done a billion mistakes before. Anytime we're doing any type of like painting project, I always try to show you guys Chase pulling off the tape. It's so satisfying to me. And every time I show it, you guys always mention it too. I don't know why that is so fun to watch, but it is. Now, once it comes to like the wood design or pattern or how you're gonna lay it, you cannot mess it up. So this is just whatever works for you. If you want a lot, if you want it busy, if you want it simple, it's definitely up to you. You can definitely get inspired by going over to Pinterest and looking up a wall. You probably can't mimic it exactly, but it'll at least give you some something to like reference and know kind of where to get started. I really think that's the best route to go. Otherwise, just start cutting those boards and laying them up there and start making a really cool just design with them. Now, as far as the outlet covers, there's so many different options. You could buy black ones, you could spray paint these. I'm gonna go ahead and just use what I have, the white ones and the paint I have, and just paint over them. Then they'll blend into the wall exactly. So that's the way I went. Um, I did look up a lot of options on Pinterest of did they leave them white? Did they do them all black? This is what I saw a lot of. Plus you really don't see the outlets because we have stuff plugged into them and furniture in front of them. So it really wasn't that big of a deal for us. All the neon signs, now they shout to me and you. To write a story on a shape that I know Do you wanna, do you wanna come along with me? Come along with me 
when coming up with the design, I think the best thing you can do is just have those boards and keep laying them around. Do not like nail them in until you're for sure, but we would just take turns like holding the boards and one of us would stand back to see, you know, do we like it? Is it too busy? Is it not enough? Is it too close? But like I said, there's nothing exact about it. You just go with your eye, what you love, what you like, and that's what's gonna be best for your space. I'm going to go ahead and put one more coat on these outlet covers. These aren't really made to be painted on. They're like a shiny plastic, so it did need two coats. Plus, where I'm touching it, I'm like rubbing it off. So it definitely needed two layers on that. And then Chase is just behind me, kind of creating the pattern. He keeps stopping to ask me, does it look okay? Does it need to go here? We just kind of kept referencing each other the whole time. So when Chase was making the cuts, he would always use this tool. I'd call it a gadget, he would call it a tool, but it's to get a 45 degree angle on the cut and that's the side we put up against the wall. Um, so if you're gonna do this, the boards that were touching the other boards, we didn't cut. But if it was gonna be touching the wall, we did a 45 degree angle. Baby, I ain't got nothing, gotta do something, get it right. Gonna keep on running, grab the fighting, live in. Okay, so we just finished putting up all the boards and obviously when I say we, <laughs> I mean Chase. So he worked on this design. He kind of picked one um, that he liked off Pinterest and we just kind of made it work for our wall and did a few adjustments. So now I'm gonna put some wood filler in where he put like all the nails in. You can't really see it on camera, but I'm gonna fill those. And then we're gonna paint these the same color that I used to paint the wall. So that's one look. If you wanna do it a little bit different, I've seen people, especially with the black, do this flat back here and then get like a satin or glossy in the same color paint. But then the boards are glossy so they stick out a little more. I think that's really cool. But since this is like a man's office, we're gonna just keep it all on flat. So like I said, I'm gonna take the wood filler and fill in those, sand them, and then we're gonna get this painted and I cannot wait to decorate this space. I did want to mention how easy this project was. We honestly thought it was going to take an entire day. We thought we'd start super early in the morning and we would do it late until dark, but it honestly only took us about six hours total. And that was even taking a few breaks and eating lunch. So you can really tackle this in one day, even if you have to keep stopping and taking care of your kids, definitely just get it going in the morning and you will finish by nighttime. And it's just a really cool project. So it's something you can do in one day. It's gonna make a huge difference. It's gonna personalize your space and it does not take much time or money to do it. Also, another tip is once you start painting it the same color as the wall, um, it starts to blend in and it's less busy. So if you want it to be really busy, 
I suggest adding a ton of boards because it's almost super simple now and when it was still wood, it was getting a little too busy for me, but once it's all painted the same color, it does simplify it a lot. So if you want it to be super busy, really add a ton of boards, even though it's gonna look crazy at first. Um, and if you like it simple, just keep in mind, you still may add a few boards because it's gonna get even simpler <laughs> once you paint it black. And you can choose any color on this. So you could do, you know, pinks or blues or grays or just do whites or the color that your wall already is. If you wanna make it easier, you wouldn't even have to paint the wall at first. You could just use that same color, which I'll probably be doing somewhere soon because I love this wall so much. And you don't have to make it a crazy design. You could do a really cool pattern or something like that. So you can totally just customize this to what you like and what your style is. Now the cleanup stage begins. This is always such a nice point to get to. It means you're done with the project and it means it's almost time for decorating, which is always my favorite part. So I love when it's cleanup time because I don't mind cleaning it up. I love getting all the clutter and mess out of my house. And then I love to start putting the room back together and just seeing what a difference it makes. Now I'm gonna start to take all the tape off from where we were painting like the wood trim. And the best tip I can give with this is take it off when it's still a little wet. So if you wait until it's dry, sometimes it's gonna kind of peel some of the paint off with it. So I've learned to let it dry just for a few minutes, but pull it off before it gets all the way dry. And I think this will just save you some like hassle and mess later on. Could I taste them for real? Longing for you, longing for you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you right here. It's the only one that did it, but look, as I pulled it up, it was already so dry. It started to pull a little bit of the paint and wood off. So definitely still do it while it's damp. Now you can just take a paintbrush and go back over it. You can take a Sharpie, but if you don't want the hassle of it, just make sure the paint's a little wet and then take off the tape. Before I start moving any furniture back, I always like to vacuum real quickly as well, just because his desk is there, I can't really vacuum underneath it, and it just freshens up the space before everything goes back to it. Um, I always just find that helpful, and I love seeing vacuum lines, so I'm just gonna give this area a quick vacuum, and then I'll start moving all the furniture pieces back. Your intentions are good. I walk back to my history, into my own So Chase was out in the garage while I was putting this room back together, so I'm trying to move everything back by myself, but I wanted to surprise him when he came in so it was completely done and he could see what it looked like finished. So that's why you're seeing me like shift the desk back and forth by myself. Um, I just wanted it to be like a big surprise when he came back in.
while we were working on Chase's office, Savannah was actually working on her bedroom and we had stuck the plant that was over here in this corner out in the hallway and Savannah put it in her room and loved it, which is totally fine because it actually had a black base and I think it would have blended in with the black wall too much. So I ran into our guest bedroom where we had this tree with the wicker basket and I feel like it looks amazing against this black wall. It's just so much contrast. I love the height of it. I just feel like all the pieces now pop against the wall instead of just getting lost. I felt like when it was just like a tan wall, it was just so simple and plain and boring and now you just walk into the space and it's absolutely beautiful. guys so much for watching today's video i hope it gets you inspired to work on your space i hope you guys have a wonderful week and i will see you in the next one bye